Hi everyone, I'm Sam. I'm Ariana. And I'm Midanya. And today we'll be going over how to use DegreeWorks. So before we start, we know a lot of you are probably asking what is DegreeWorks and why is it useful? Basically, DegreeWorks is an online platform that students can use to view their university and degree requirements. This allows students to track their academic progress and keep up to date on the requirements they have completed and still need to complete. So where is DegreeWorks located? So you can go to the University Registrar's webpage, log into your student access account, which is on that yellow toolbar on the top, and then on the left side column, you'll find DegreeWorks. But before you get started, DegreeWorks can be easy peasy lemon squeezy. But before you get stressed to press lemon zest, let us break it down for you. Okay, so the first thing that you will see on your degree works is this worksheet. This just includes general information like your student ID number, your name, degree type, class level, and any majors and minors that you may have. Throughout your degree works, you will also see circles of different colors. So what do these circles next to all of your requirements mean? So a blue half circle means that a requirement is in progress. A green circle with a check mark means that that requirement has been completed. A yellowish brown circle with an exclamation mark in the middle means see an advisor and a red circle means that a course is still needed. So your degree works is organized into four different sections based off of your specific requirements and your major. So the first section are the university requirements. The second section are the general education requirements. And if you are a transfer student, um, you may also have IGETC that completes this part of your requirements. Then we have our school requirements, which vary depending on your major. And then again, we have your major requirements and minor requirements if you do have a minor, but we'll get into these more specifically in the later part of the video. So this is what your requirements should look like. Um, and if you hit on the blue words, it will take you to those specific requirements. All right, so first we have our university requirements. This includes your entry level writing and American history and institutions. Entry level writing must be satisfied before the beginning of your fourth quarter here at UCI. And American history and institutions just need to be completed before you graduate. There is no specific deadline. However, we do wanna mention that these are typically fulfilled before entering UCI, but if they are needed, they will be indicated with the red circle instead of the green check mark that is shown. All right, so continuing on to general education requirements or known as GEs. Um, these are your graduation requirements separate from one from your major or minor requirements. And there are seven categories and we'll be going over each one so you understand how these requirements can be fulfilled. If you are a transfer student with a completed IGETC, this section will only include upper division writing. If you have a partial IGETC or did not submit an IGETC, the GE sections not covered by classes from your previous college will be shown here. All right, but starting with GE1, we have lower division writing. This can be fulfilled with a variety of ways. You can do it with writing 39B and 39C, writing 37 and 39C, two courses from humanities core, or writing 39B plus 30 or 31. And continuing on with GE1, there's also upper division writing. Some majors may require a certain upper division writing requirement, but luckily we have a video of all of that information in another video called Commonly Asked Questions about upper division writing. So feel free to check that video out for more information. But upper division writing is usually a course 100 and above, that's the number. And then you wanna take in consideration if a W is there, that'll indicate that it's usually upper division writing. GE2, Science and Technology, is usually your STEM courses, and GE3, Social and Behavioral Sciences. These are usually your social science courses, and it, GE3 is covered by all social science majors. Okay, moving on, we have GE4, Arts and Humanities. This requirement is completed through classes like philosophy, classics, art history. You do need three classes for the Arts and Humanities GE. 
Then we have GE5, quantitative, symbolic, and computational reasoning. You don't actually need to really worry about taking classes specifically for this GE requirement, just because we do have a math requirement for the School of Social Sciences, which we'll talk about a little bit later. And those classes will count towards GE5. Uh, we then have GE6, which is language other than English. A lot of students commonly complete this before entering UCI, maybe through taking three years of the same language in high school or taking up to level three of that language in high school. But we still have a lot of students who complete this once they come to university. The next two GEs are GE7, Multicultural Studies, and GE8, International and Global Issues. Some of the classes that you'll take for your majors can fulfill these GEs, but not all of them. So just make sure that you're taking the appropriate classes for these GEs. Okay, moving on, we then have our school requirements. If you are a major under the School of Social Sciences, you will have certain requirements that you have to complete for our school. And going back to what I mentioned earlier about the GE5, the three core sequence in mathematics will complete GE5, and it is also a school requirement. So if you're an anthropology major or maybe a psychology major, you'll take the route Anthro 10A to B 10C or maybe Psych 10A to B 10C. As you can see, there's a lot of options, so it really depends on what your major is. If you're an econ major, you will be taking Math 2A, Math 2B, Econ 15A, and Econ 15B, and that will count towards this requirement. The second requirement is our one computer education course. And a lot of students commonly take Sci 3A, but once again, there are a lot of different classes you could take for this requirement. So moving on to major requirements here, we see that Peter is majoring in psychology. So I'll go ahead and break it down into columns. So the first column will show you the requirements that you still need to complete. The second column will show you the class title. And the third column will show you the actual name and topic of the class that you're taking. The fourth column will show you the grade you received in the class once grades are posted at the end of the quarter. And if you're currently in the class, you will just see an IP, which stands for in progress. The fifth column just shows you the number of credits earned for the class, which will vary depending on the type of class that you're taking. So whether it's a lab, a seminar, or just a regular four unit course. And the last column shows you the term in which you took the class. So whether you took it in the fall, winter, spring, or summer, and what year. Some students may also get kind of confused um, thinking that they have to complete every single module that's listed underneath the list. So for example, three courses selected from one module, you would just go ahead and complete three classes, not every single class that's listed there on to minor requirements. So you may or may not have a minor or be interested in one, but those requirements will also be found on your degree works. The requirements for your minor will also look the same as they do for your major. You'll see the same circles and still see all of the modules that you have to choose from. So the next section will be your electives. So if you have any classes that do not count towards a specific requirement we mentioned above, this is where those classes will be applied just as elective credit. A lot of students commonly take elective classes to help fulfill their 180 unit requirement needed to graduate. All right, moving on to exceptions on degree works. These are usually courses that are manually substituted by an advisor for a variety of reasons, such as community college courses that are applicable for transfer or passing AP exam scores. And if we can move on to this next slide, you'll see what it'll look like on your degree works. You'll see the advisor notes, the date it was applied on, and any notes that the advisor might have put on. That concludes our degree works video. Just a reminder that you can always email us with questions or find other ways we can support you on our academic advising website. And if you ever wanna make any changes to your degree works, you can find the link to the degree works update form in the description of this video and on the website that's on the slide. Also make sure to follow us on Instagram and thank you so much for watching.